The good people over at the Toledo Museum of Art let me and cameraman Jeff into the peristyle to do an interview with someone super cool. Let's go check that out right now. Yeah, I used to, when I had a, back when I had a red pickup truck, I used to listen to country a lot. Um, Wait. I know, I know, I know. They're like, stop. This is Sarah Jobin. She has a black belt in judo. She entered Harvard College at age 16 and... And I'm the resident conductor of the Toledo Symphony. Needless to say, I had a lot of questions. So I started with the obvious. Um, what does a conductor do so explain to me what the, the, the job entails. So it depends who you ask. Sometimes a conductor is a traffic cop saying one, two, three, four, how fast you go and how slow and when you stop. Um, that's on one level. On another level, hopefully, the conductor is giving something ineffable to the sound and to the feeling of the musicians. Like for instance, I've seen five different conductors get up in, same of the, in front of the same orchestra and you get actually five different sounds. But hopefully also the conductor is going for the composer's sound. So the conductor's, the conductor's job is to serve the composer um, and to study the score and find out what the composer wanted and bring that out in whatever way. But a lot of what the conductor does is like totally unconscious or subconscious on the part of the musicians and also on the part of the conductor. <laughs> Obviously, it takes a particular kind of person to want to be a conductor. So I asked Sarah what made her want to do this in the first place. It was the hardest thing I could think of to do with my life. Um, and I was inspired by, I was, a, I was a kid, I was a student at a summer music program at Tanglewood. Um, when I was 15, I was in the piano program for high school students. And they had like a free thing where you could go watch the orchestra rehearsal and you saw all these different conductors and they were really, really good conductors, including Leonard Bernstein and other people. Um, and I was amazed watching them and seeing how the sound of the orchestra changed depending on how they felt about the conductor. Clearly, Leonard Bernstein had a big effect on Sarah. And his music making kind of reached out and grabbed me so much in, in such a way that like, just like grabbed my heart. I mean, Lenny was my hero, really. So, I mean, he was American, he was thoroughly American. Like, because you don't call him maestro, you call him Lenny. And um, that's different from the European, I am the maestro, you know? Yeah. Um, the Bugs so, Bunny maestro yeah. thing, you know, the hand <laughs> gloves, still I have to tell you, in this opera that I just conducted last week in New York, I did the Bugs Bunny thing. There's one part where they have to repeat the music, they just have to keep going for 10 seconds, and I did Bugs Bunny. Although most classical music is hundreds of years old, Sarah says there's some newer stuff out there that's pretty amazing. So can I show you the Crazy Hard score that I just yeah, conducted in New York? Okay, I have to get up for a That's second. all right. Okay, so this was written in 1997. It was by a French guy named Pascal Dussapin, but it's on a, a libretto by Gertrude Stein. So she's American. Um, it's crazy. Okay, so can you see this? So there's stuff in here that I didn't even know how to study. And I looked at it and I'm like, I don't even know how I'm gonna conduct that. And the singers were the same. They're like, um, okay, how do I do that? And, you know, how do I even approach it? Um, in here there's glissandos, there's times when they have to hum, there's, uh, I mean, it's, I'm gonna show you. It's yeah. crazy, it's crazy. Crazy when it comes, did you do this one? We just performed it in uh, at the Irondale. Uh, we were listed, we had a blurb in the New Yorker. We performed it last Saturday in Brooklyn. Yeah, I think it was the first time that this has been done professionally in the United States. That's really amazing. What we did, yeah. Obviously, Sarah's a person who's not afraid to take chances. So what's it like being a rare female in a male-dominated art form? It's very interesting because it's really changing. Something happened in 2012 where somebody made a terrible comment in the press and like the press picked it up worldwide, like some Neanderthal comment, you know, women can't conduct or whatever. And somebody picked it up and all of a sudden, like the whole world started paying attention to female conductors, which is 
uh, great, and there's a lot of young ones coming up now that are extremely talented, and they they don't have, you know, there there's not kind of, it doesn't seem like there's any barriers for them. Since 2013, like the the conversation has changed, and there's all this stuff out in the open that didn't used to be out in the open. Um, when I signed up for this, my conducting teacher said, you know you have to be ready to sacrifice everything for this career, and I said yes. And he said, uh, you know you have to be better than the men. And I said yes. So that's what I signed up for. I didn't, like, I didn't sign up for equality. I didn't expect equal opportunity. When I was 15 and I was sitting in the back of the shed and I was watching Leonard Bernstein up there, and I said to myself, I want to do that. The next thought was, you have about as much chance as shooting for the moon. And the next thought was, don't tell anybody. But then I just did it. <laughs> Never one to rest on her laurels? It's time for Sarah to risk it all again. And in June, after three years with the Toledo Symphony Orchestra, she'll be stepping down as conductor. So in the near future, I am continuing as a freelancer and I'm also moving to Richmond, Virginia um, in sort of a crazy thing that I'm doing with my life, but I'm making an effort to dedicate myself to a cause larger than myself. Do you care to elaborate? Um, I'm gonna be working with a multi-faith group that specifically uses music to bring people together. So after all the training, all the college, and all the adversity, Sarah says it comes down to one thing. On the second performance day of this, I woke up in the morning and I had these harmonies in my head, like the three soprano lines, doing all this crazy, crazy stuff. And it's like runs like a tape in my head. So there's always music. I'm a, I'm a professional music learner and there's always something that my mind is learning. I am, that's what I do, like 24-7. <laughs> Um, so, I mean, what matters is that you know the music and you respect the music and you're there to try to serve the music, that's all that matters. <laughs>